Think about this in the context of trickle-down economics. Isaac Newton was born December 25th, I can't remember the year, but a long time ago. Uh, and what he has done, his discoveries, have changed the world. They have trickled down, or more accurately, flooded down to all the rest of us who are not geniuses, who are not anywhere near as creative and as productive and as smart as Isaac Newton was. But Isaac Newton has made all of our lives better. They could not have been an industrial revolution without Isaac Newton. They could not have been a technological revolution today without Isaac Newton. Very few of the bridges that you see out there could have been built without Isaac Newton. We certainly wouldn't have gone to the moon without Isaac Newton. We wouldn't have any, 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 any of the material goods that we have today without having an Isaac Newton. Talk about trickle down. Isaac Newton made all of our lives, hundreds of years later, much, much better off than they would have been because of his discoveries, because of what he did. That is the essence of trickle down. I don't like the term trickle down. I like the idea that we all stand on the shoulders of giants. We all stand on the shoulders of atlases, to refer you back to Atlas Shrugged. There are people out there who are incredibly productive. There are people out there who are incredibly smart. There are people out there who are incredibly knowledgeable. And they make life better for us by orders of magnitude. They make life better for the poor, for the middle class, for everybody. Much better. And without them, there would be no jobs for the poor. No jobs for the middle class. Without entrepreneurs, without inventors, without engineers, without the so-called rich, without those people in the top, I don't know, 1%, 10%. Where do you think jobs are going to come from? Who's going who's gonna to invent the next great thing? Oh, Bill Gates and, uh, and uh, all these rich entrepreneurs out there. They've got all this money. And we don't see any of it. What about, there's no trickle down. Of course there's trickle down. You've got an iPhone. You've got an iPad. You've got all the technology. You've got an internet. Internet is a huge trickle down to you. To you who didn't invent the internet. I didn't invent the internet. A bunch of entrepreneurs did most of the work to commercialize it, to make it possible for me to use it. They made a lot of money at it. And who benefits from that? Me. I get to use the internet. What did I pay for it? Zero. Nothing. Nada. Of course, economics is about trickle-down. Again, not trickle-down, flood-down, waterfall-down. It is the great entrepreneurs, the great producers who make our economy run. Not the workers, sorry. I mean, workers are important. There's nothing against work. Work is good. Work is moral. Work is virtuous. But you don't change the world. The people who change the world, the people who make your work possible, the people who create the jobs, the people who have thoughts about how to take money and invent something completely new and invest in something completely outrageous that nobody would have thought possible and thereby creating jobs in some field that we can't even imagine today. It's that bioengineer that has an idea about how to cure cancer. He is going to change the world and impact everybody else. Talk, call it trickle down, call it flood down. He's going to make the lives of everybody who didn't invent this cure for cancer. Everybody's lives better. And hopefully, he becomes super rich as a consequence. And then the left and some people on the right will say, Oh, he's got so much money. That's not right. We're not benefiting from all the money he has. We need more trickle down. You already got the trickle down. You got the drugs. You got the cure for cancer. That was the trickle down. And oh, by the way, not only did you get the drugs, the cure for cancer, you also got, you also got employment. He hired people to produce the drug. We've got people selling the drug. We've got massive quantities of employment. 
And on top of that, he's taken all his money that he's made and he's investing it, thus providing capital for other businessmen to create more jobs and more products and more benefits for your life and for my life. I mean, every way you slice this, every way you slice it, it is the successful, rich businessmen who create the goods and the jobs that we enjoy. All of them. At the end of the day, you have to be realistic about this. If you're a single employee at a single job doing a single task, you're creating very little. But if you're Jeff Bezos, you I mean, think of what he's created. He's created Amazon. Changed all of our lives. Changed the entire landscape. Created hundreds of thousands of jobs. Some of them at Amazon. Some of them at UPS and FedEx. Yeah, some jobs went away at retailers who were less efficient. We all benefit because we get convenience and price. And yet, Jeff Bezos, then he takes all that money and he invests it. One of his investments is in a space exploration company. He wants to go to Mars. He hires people. People work for him. One day we might go to Mars and who knows what that will open up in terms of benefits to mankind. Other parts of his money, I'm sure, invested in all kinds of other companies. Basically, that money is going to do what? To create jobs and to create goods and products that we consume. It's not that businessmen exploit us. It's not that businessmen do nothing. We do all the hard work and they benefit from our hard work and they, they take it away from us. No, no, it's the opposite. They do the really hard work and the really hard work is not physical labor, it turns out. Never has been. The really hard work is the thinking necessary to invent Amazon. The thinking necessary to discover the laws of physics. The thinking necessary to improve the light bulb, as Thomas Edison did. Or to create a whole electricity industry, as Thomas Edison did. Never made it, it you know. That's the real work, and that's the work that benefits humanity. That's the work that we all benefit from. That's the work that trickles down. But even in the more mundane view, uh, uh, perspective, the, the, the purely money materialistic sense, it's not trickled down, it's a flood. Think about Think about, uh, uh, you know, cutting taxes for the rich. They have more money. What are they going to do with that money? What are they going to do with that money? Now, if you had money, if I had money, we're likely to go out and spend it. Indeed, I just read a report. Where is it? Yeah, that U.S. consumer spending rose in November. It's, it's, I think it's rising in December again. It's, it's really, really high. And at our saving rate, the amount of money we save is at a 10-year low. Now think about that. How do, where does the money to build new factories come from? Where does the money to build new warehouses or stores or to buy new trucks come from? Where does the money to invest in new technologies come from? It comes from our saving. It comes from, you can't, the, 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 the money to invest is money that somebody saved. And we're not saving. Saving rate is at a 10-year low. And indeed, if you dig into the numbers, you discover that most Americans don't save at all. A lot of us are in debt. We have negative saving. We consume money we don't even have. Who does save? Who does most of the saving in the American economy? Most of the saving in the American co economy was done, is done by wealthy people. Because 
after you reach a certain level, there's only so much you can consume. There's only so much you want to consume. And then you invest. You save. And by doing so, you create jobs. You create new products. You create a growing economy. The responsibility for the growing economy in the United States is the fact that wealthy people are saving and investing. Now, when you cut their taxes, what do rich people do? Now, poor people or low middle class people, they, they go out and they buy more stuff. Now, that's okay. I have nothing against that, and I'm all for ta- cutting everybody's taxes. But the fact is, from a purely economic perspective, saving is much more important than consumption. Investment is far more important than consumption because it creates future jobs, future consumption, future goods and products to be consumed. What do rich people do with the money they don't pay in taxes? They save it. They invest it. They create jobs. So yeah, it's trickle down. Yeah, it's flood down. That's where we get our jobs. So if you want the U.S. economy to do well, if you want to have more job opportunities, more job prospects, you want wealthy individuals, you want businesses to make more money, not less. To be able to keep more of their own money, not less. Because they're the ones who create the jobs. 